I think this should be a good time to start, Deepak. Uh, for all of those who joined in on behalf of Upgrad, I welcome all of you to our webinar. We're going to be talking about studying in Canada, one of the hottest and one of the most emergent destinations for you to pursue your higher education abroad. Uh, also welcoming Deepak Mehta, who represents Yopal University in Canada and Apply Board. Uh, for those of you who have uh, been doing your research, I'm sure you know your Apple University and Apply Board. Both, both of them play an instrumental role in ensuring that Canadian education is more accessible uh, for Indian students like all of you. Uh, to give our introduction, Upgrad is ensuring that more and more universities across the world, some of the finest top one or top two percent universities in the world, uh, can make education abroad, your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, or diploma courses more affordable, more accessible for you, uh, ensuring that you have complete control as a consumer to be choosing how much of the portion can you be doing in India, how much of the portion can you be doing abroad, and if you want to do the entire degree uh, fully abroad on campus, everything. The, we're trying to ensure uh, that the control comes back to you at the end of the day, while it's also ensuring that top-notch quality education is being delivered to you by instrumental universities like your full university, which Deepak represents. Uh, just to cover the scope of what we're going to be talking about through the course of the webinar, Deepak is an expert with Canadian higher education. Uh, he also represents your full university here. So for all of those who are looking forward to building your career trajectory in Canada, Deepak is going to be your man. He's going to be helping you through and through. Um, and for all of those who are looking to build a career in business specifically, or arts or design or film school, Yorkville University has all of those courses with them. Uh, and so I think we should jump in. Uh, to begin with, I am very thankful to you, Deepak, for being here. Thank you so much, Praneet. I'm really, really excited to talk to all the students. and. Uh... Let's see, bring it on. Absolutely. So I think the first thing which I'd like to ask you is, although most of us have done our research and we know Canada is the next go-to place for education abroad, but coming from an expert standpoint, what do you think? Why should we pick Canada at the end, end, end of the day if we're looking at UK, Australia, US? Why Canada in terms of a career? What do you think in terms of academics? What is your take on it, Deepak? So Praneet, talking about Canada, I think uh, Canada was probably one country throughout this COVID pandemic time that uh, that was open throughout, you know, they were welcoming students with the open arm, they're multicultural. So, you know, and I heard this one of the white people saying in Canada, nobody is Canadian Canadian. It's like so multicultural, you'll see people from all across the world. You know, you'll see Indians, you'll see people from South Asia and Southeast Asia, different parts, parts of the world. So it's not just Canada, Canada. Right, and not only that, I think uh, Canada has an amazing academic, yet very much affordable uh, education system, uh, like top ranked university and schools we have in Canada. And they're very, pretty much affordable as compared to other countries and other markets. And then I think one of the most interesting part is Canada also has postgraduate work permit, uh, which is about three years, which I think most of the students will look, look for that postgraduate work permit so that they can get practical uh, work experience of uh, what they have studied in a classroom. And I think last but not the least, uh, they're immigration friendly. And uh, I think most students who prefer to go to Canada at some point of time in your, their career, they look forward to settle in Canada. So I think that is, again, one of the most important reasons why students look for Canada. Absolutely taken. Uh, in your experience, what are the two or three most uh exponentially rising industries in canada if if i'm going to canada for my bachelor's degree what courses should i be pursuing that this abundant employability deepak so i think uh, one of the top industries of course is computer science you know big data artificial intelligence uh, uh i think it's it's coming up like big time uh and I would say the second industry you can probably look at is construction, because, you know, with the growing population requires the growing infrastructure. So that is another interest industry, which is very, very huge. Canada is also known for uh, 
energy, you know, generation of energy. When you talk about Canada, Canada is ranked amongst the top five countries across the globe because they have abundant resources. I mean, if I were to talk about Canada, land-wise, geographically, they're three times Canada, uh, three times India, geographical area-wise. And if you talk about their population, their population has just Delhi and India population. So you can imagine the kind of scope that you have, not only in terms of, uh, you know, for the students to get the jobs, but otherwise also uh, there's this so much, uh, uh, so much uh, available opportunities available in Canada. So you mentioned computer science, you men mentioned construction, and you mentioned energy management. For all our le learners to know, York University has an amazing DBA degree program with majors or with specialization in energy management. I think uh, it's also a very smooth transition from a science background all the way doing a BBA with energy management, which puts, which puts the learner in the best of both the world. So you've got a business standpoint skill set, but also energy management specialized skills. Uh, We'll come to York World degree options in a couple of minutes and talk about what do they have to offer. Uh, but for all of the learners who are asking civil engineering, who are asking about computer science, Deepak has made it very clear that that's, those are two of the most proliferating uh, industries in Canada. Now, Deepak, my next question and very important. What is the cost of education like in Canada? I've often heard that Canada is going to be relatively a lot more affordable than most parts of the world. What's your take on it? So again, Pranit, uh, Canada has everything to offer. It all depends upon your pocket size and you know what kind of financial background you're coming from. So you know the student can choose from doing diplomas in Canada. Then they also have options to do associate degrees, which are usually two years or three years, or they can also also do four years honors degree, honors a bachelor's degree. Uh, and then we, again, at the postgraduate level, we have postgraduate diplomas and masters. So I would say, you know, it all depends upon your budget. You know, in case if you have good, you're coming from a good financial background and if you're good in academics, then definitely I would suggest that you look at a university. And an average fee of a university could range between 20 to 25,000 Canadian dollars. And I'm talking about the mid, middle level university. If you're going to the top schools, it can also cost you about $30,000 a year. Right. If you're going for diplomas, diplomas can range between thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars, can go up to twenty thousand dollars a year. So you know they they have everything to offer, and they're, they're pretty. It all depends upon like what kind of financial background and what is your affordability. So all the way from about you know mid tier university would be about eleven to twelve lakhs a year, all the way to twenty plus lakhs. Also depending on how ac academically brilliant or strong you're. I mean, you are as a learner. Got it. Uh, now, you, you, you mentioned one of the biggest benefits of studying in Canada is the PGWP, the three-year post-study work visa. How many months or how many years do they have to be on short on campus to be taking a three-year work visa? Deeper? So usually the Canadian law says that if you're doing a diploma which, or a degree program or any program, which is between eight months to two years, usually you get a postgraduate work permit uh, of the length, same as the duration of the program, if it is less than two years and more than eight months. But if you're doing at least two years, then you get a postgraduate work permit for up to three years. Having said that, student also has an option to legally work in Canada for 20 hours a week when they're studying on campus. And when they're on a full-time break, they can also work full-time. So th those options are there. During the pandemic time, Canadian government also allowed that the student can actually start their classes online uh, without having to worry about their postgraduate work permit they will count their education period towards their postgraduate work permit again depending upon the length of the program so i think that that option is also available for the students who are not able to travel to canada or whose visas have not come in but they have started the online classes already and uh, i would talk a little more about that because yorkville university has uh, started a program called head start program and we started this program right from the time when the pandemic started and our Head Start program says that if the student does not have a visa, so let's say, you know, if you're a student and if you don't have a visa, but, you know, you want to start your classes online, then you can start your classes online without worrying about your visa uh, decision. God forbid if something goes wrong and if you get a visa refusal, we will refund all your fees and we will only deduct a small administrative charge of $500. And we will also give you transcripts 
uh, of the time period that you have finished completed at Yorkville University at no additional cost. So, and I'm sure there may, might be other schools as well who might be running similar programs like that. But yes, we wanted to come forward, support our students. We understand this is pandemic time. At the same time, we wanted to make sure that our student doesn't run through any financial losses. Absolutely. I think uh, that is one of the biggest points of why everybody wants to look at Canada right now as uh, the place for the higher education. I think the flexibility and the ease of norms and the student friendliness that they have um, as a country. Uh, a lot of students here are asking about Yorkwood University fee structure. Uh, to add on to what Deepak mentioned, I think I must mention at this point that Upgrad also has a unique program that we started with Yorkville University, a, uh, yes, a year ago now, where you can actually study in India for the first year, pay your fee as little as two and a half lakhs. And then for the next three years, you study on campus at Yorkville University. That gives you an additional year to prepare yourself for the academic readiness equip yourself with the navigation skills, use that one year to, to get your IELTS score ready, uh, use that one year to adjust to how rigorous the curriculum is and understand which subjects you finally want to pick up or what majors or what specialization you want to pick up. This setup actually brings down the cost to 50%. Deepak mentioned that a mid-tier university normally costs about $20,000 which is actually Yorkville University's fee also per year. That means about 10 to 11 lakhs every year for four years. That's almost about 45 lakhs for four years. With Upgrad's unique pro program with Yorkville University, the cost of education comes down to almost 20 to 25 lakhs. That's how affordable we've made it. And you can take up a one plus three setup. You can take up a two, two plus two setup. Our point is that Deepak rightly mentioned that you need to spend two years on campus to get the three-year work visa, which is the maximum work visa you can get. So those two years are already covered at Yorkville University, even if you go through upgrades two plus two. The other thing is, which I know Deepak would, would uh, sort of uh, shoulder with me here, that a lot of Indian students actually look at masters as, as the rightful option to study abroad. And they do a three-year BBA, and then which is followed by two years of diploma, or if in case they've scored well, they can also do a master's degree uh, in Canada. Why Deepak's University, Yorkville University, and Upgrad join hands together was have the best of education in India for two years instead of three years. But the last two years, instead of doing a diploma in Canada, just finish your proper bachelor's four-year degree and earn the requisite bachelor degree status holder in Canada, which gets you tons of employability. Deepak and I will throw some more light on the employability option that Yorkville University offers, which sort of companies normally recruit Yorkville graduates, so on and so forth. Meanwhile, one of the biggest question, Deepak, that most of them are asking is what is the difference between diploma and degree? I think that's the biggest uh, dialogue right now. Right, uh, Praneet, and I think uh, that's a very, very valid question. I think most students are confused whether they should go for a diploma program or they should choose a degree program. So I think there's a lot of difference between diploma and a degree. And usually when I talk to a student who's looking for a diploma or a degree, I ask them one simple question that if you were in India and you let's assume that you've completed your grade 12, what would you go for? Will you go for a diploma or what will be your first choice, a degree program? And I think, you know, in 95% or probably 99% of the cases, the answer comes as like, you know, I would want to go for a degree program because degree has more value. So similarly in Canada also, degree holds more value as compared to diploma. Having said that, you know, we have some excellent, amazing colleges who offer great hands-on uh, learning diploma programs, which are very, very useful, uh, you know, and makes the student job ready. But, you know, when you're doing a degree program, there are several advantages of doing a degree over diploma program. First advantage I would say is it, of course, helps you with your permanent residency. How? 
because you know usually i think again 99.99% who are going students who are going to canada are looking and targeting to stay and live in canada for the permanent residence right now with when you do a pursue a degree program in canada that helps you to get more points on your degree program as compared to a diploma program and that helps you to fast track your immigration process because you make more points so let's assume you know usually the student have to take general like for applying for the pr and if you're and usually they say the score required is 8777 and if you're not able to get that score let's assume in a bad worst case scenario then at least with degree and with more points for your pr those points can be adjusted if you're not able to you know enter into the point system pool having said that i'm not an immigration consultant so you know when the student graduates my strong recommendation would be to get in touch with an ircc lawyer who can guide you better when it comes to the pr second thing i would of course say that and i would specifically highlight yorkville university here because all the programs that yorkville university has they lead to a professional designation there are the skill based programs and i'm going to quickly share my screen and i will show the programs that we offer so we have bachelor of business administration so of course we have two campuses we have a campus in toronto which is again a prime location and vancouver these are the two largest cities in canada and toronto our campus are very very close to popular places like mississauga scarborough brampton north york and we have a campus in downtown too uh, like you mentioned that yorkville university has a sister called toronto film school so we have a campus toronto film school campus in downtown and our vancouver campus is very close to surrey it's hardly 10 minutes away from surrey so talking about the bachelor of business administration program we have four specialization uh, so we have supply chain management we have accounting we have project management and we have energy management program now these are all specialized program and lead to a professional designation like for example supply chain management is recognized by council of supply chain management professionals accounting is accredited by cpa like we have ca chartered accountants in india we have cpa chartered professional accountants and it is also recognized by canadian payroll association project management is recognized by pmi which is project management institute and it is pmp certified and energy management is recognized by fortis british columbia which is one of the biggest companies of uh, producers of gas and electricity across british columbia province so like i mentioned you know all these degree programs lead to a professional designation which means when you graduate out of these programs and when you're looking for a job in the corporate industry chances are with these accreditation and the certifications that you have upon graduating that you know increases your chances of getting into a white collar job in canada and having said that the benefit of a location is that you know these are the two largest cities and most of the corporate industries are out there and we're very very close to downtown where with the entire setup is there i also saw certain questions in the q and a and the chat box column a lot of people also had questions about construction civil so we have another degree program called bachelor of interior design program where we teach how to design structures using autocad and these structures could be corporate office spaces it could be residential complexes it could be healthcare designs like hospitals hospitality designs like hotels restaurants or educational designs like school colleges universities and this program is also recognized by cida and arido there's an exam that student can write upon graduating from this program and they become a licensed interior designer across north america which is the biggest advantage of this program so these are all the degree programs and i know that student has a huge fear that you know they would have to study for four years they, because most students you know doesn't want to study for four years they're looking for a two year or a three year program let me tell you all these programs bba you can finish at this program in 2.5 years two and a half years however the degree that you get is equivalent to four years bachelor of interior design program can be finished in three years however this program is also equivalent to four year degree in canada and with the kind of scholarships we have we offer 10000 dollars scholarship and we're pretty much offering it to every student because of the pandemic situation that makes these degree programs even more affordable and last but not the least you know our unique partnership with upgrad like pranith mentioned initially that allows student to complete one year or two year here in india and if let's assume if someone is completing two years here uh, like a chandigarh university program online with upgrad 
they can get a direct entry into third year which means two year they can finish here two year they can finish in canada and they get a four year equivalent canadian degree uh, just at a cost of a diploma because if you were to do the full degree in canada it would cost you about sixty thousand dollars after scholarship however if you're doing using this pathway that we have with upgrad chandigarh university then you're paying an indian currency for first two years in india and you're only paying the remaining 30000 canadian approximately 30000 canadian dollars for the remaining two years which is pretty much like doing a two years diploma in canada however you're getting a degree which is equivalent to four years so i think it's a huge blessing in disguise for all of our students especially the undergrad students great 12 students who have joined in today and i think this is one of the best options that you can explore at one of the most affordable cost and you can get all the advantages of a degree one last thing a lot of students when they pursue a diploma program after 12th in canada usually their options are closed you know what after diploma what academic program can i pursue and then when they actually look at it up you know they don't have any choice but to go back to a bachelor's degree because they cannot pursue their masters after completing diploma so i think that is another reason why you should go for a degree program because after a degree program you have all your doors open if you want to do a pt diploma or probably get into a masters tomorrow to upgrade your skill set or if you're not making enough points for your pr so you know that way is also this degree program would help absolutely deepak uh i think we can jump to some of the questions now uh just give me a second so I, I have been trying to be very responsive on your questions on the chat box. If you are interested for masters, this particular space with Deepak is going to be for bachelors. However, we do provide masters option in Canada. Also, these are going to cost between 20 to 25 lakhs. They are both direct options and with upgrad both. Uh, and the MBA is going to be for two years in Canada, but, uh, you have to write to me on an email, praneet.singh and upgrade.com, and we will definitely get back to you. MB option, yes, is there. One year in, one India, uh, one year in India and one year in Canada, is there. It runs similar to how you, uh, how uh, Deepak's University, Yorkville University, and us, we have planned. In fact, most of our degree programs, whether it's in the US or Canada, Australia, or UK, we have them planned as one plus one. One year is of transnational education and one year is on campus, ensuring that you don't actually make any loss on the post-study work visa. Well, uh, a lot of students have been asked without IELTS. So Deepak and Upgrad have been working very closely, York University and Upgrad Abroad, to ensure that the first year you don't have to have IELTS to start. We'll give you a whole year to complete your IELTS. You have to have six a score of six prior to moving on campus with your cool university uh deepak it's a very very interesting time to ask you uh what is the roi like so you mentioned this the the entire course fee on a general level you mentioned if you're studying in canada you're going to be spending between 45 to 50 all the way to 60 lakhs for four years yes now if they're studying with upgrad they're sort of spending about 25 odd lakhs for all four years combined. For a Yorkville graduate or for a general Canadian BBA graduate, what's the starting salary like, Deepak? So see, for usually, typically for a BBA program, um, I think the students usually start with a salary of about 40, 50,000 Canadian dollars on an average. But again, it can vary from person to person. If you're great at your business analytic skills and if you're good with communication skills, confident, if you work really, really hard, then chances are you might get more. If you talk about interior design program, usually the students start at about 50 to 70,000 Canadian dollars. Having said that, we've had a lot of successful case studies because, you know, we have career services where we can, you know, connect students with the prospective employers. We help them write their resumes. We tell them, you know, which are the websites where they can find jobs. And the best part is our faculties are also working in the corporate industry. So they bring with them a lot of experience from the corporate and they also bring with them networking. So for example, you know, if I'm a student in a class and if I'm doing really, really well and the faculty really likes me and let's say assume that, you know, his work somewhere with, you know, the potential job openings, 
chances are they might refer them for that job and you know that works big time i would also like to share a case study with you pranith here we had a student called nikhil jain uh, he was from ludhiana and he started his bba program project management program at yorkville university and is currently into his uh, final year and uh, he was one of the most hard working students i've ever seen he got a job with fedex uh, which is again a very popular company which i'm pretty sure everybody is aware of and uh, his contract with fedex was that if he maintains uh, certain percentage of attendance in certain percentage and that was pro probably about 80% or more i i am not sure on the percentage but it was about 80 or 85% on the attendance and in academics then that company was willing to uh, you know uh, reimburse 50% of his tuition fee and they also offered him that as soon as he graduates they will hire him as an assistant manager so you know we have those opportunities up and available in the market to grab but it all depends upon how smart are you as a student how uh, how much are uh, you willing to work hard to get those uh, opportunities and it also depends upon your networking with your peers at the school absolutely sir i think uh, so in a normal degree if you're going for a four i mean for a full four year degree you're spending about 45 uh, lakhs minimum and you're earning about 25 to 30 lakhs to begin with and when you're going with upgrad You're spending about twenty-five lakhs, and you're getting at least thirty to thirty-five lakhs. So there's more than a hundred percent ROI, which is one of the most important things. I think if you're looking at Indian universities also, and comparing what you're investing, which is about nine to fifteen to almost twenty lakhs of rupees on private universities in India, with the hostel fee and all of the fee combined, I think, and eventually all of you want to move abroad. so what ultimately ends up happening is just to get the three year work visa just to start building your career you first of all spend about 10 to 20 lakhs on your bachelor's degree having gotten nowhere i think indian job op opportunities for an average indian student is about 5 to 6 lakhs a year which is the maximum i'm trying to cite here and then two years of masters abroad um and after almost 5 years of getting through with academics you finally get somewhere so we can actually fast track that path deepak rightly mentioned that you can get a four year bachelor's degree uh, while just spending two years on campus and with which your pr application is expedited accelerated and you can normally find better jobs after a full uh, four year degree uh, one of the special things that deepak's partnership the, the yorkville university partnership with upgrad is you can even come from humanities business or science background just have to have 50% marks 50% marks to get in you can come from a state board you can come from the national board you can come from an international baccalaureate any board i think that's what accessibility is like deep I mean, yorkville university is actually trying to make sure that studying in canada is actually not a very far fetched dream anymore it's not a long shot it's not something that you need half a crore rupees to actually put aside it's it's really doable in about 20 to 25 lakhs uh the next question deepak for you is everybody is asking about mp what well, pte scores are are pte scores going to be accepted by your school university yes deepak. yes yes pranit we do accept uh, three popular english language tests we accept ielts overall six uh and then pt we accept overall 50 and above then we also accept tofel overall 70 or above absolutely. and we have seen visa success uh, successes with tofel as well home based tofel as well absolutely well i am i'm i'm sorry uh deepak but i think let me just answer one uh, mba query at least i hope you don't mind so for MBA, no 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 but you can write to me on pranit.singetupgrad.com i have written that but however the eligibility requirement is a 3 year degree you can pursue that one year with upgrad which lets you cover on the 4 year 3 year degree difference and then you can straight away jump into mba in canada you don't need work experience actually you just need a 3 year degree you can start with us right away cover that one extra year and then you can cover the mba degree in canada for one additional year uh so there are about 11 months in india 15 months in canada on shore and the overall cost is going to be reduced by almost 8 lakh rupees so your 
average cost is going to be between 20 to 23 lakhs. That, that's what MBA looks like with us. Your minimum mark should be 50% in your bachelor's. Please write to me for you know, your individual uh, background, your individual cases, write to me on my email address. Uh, what percentage should we have in plus two to get into York University? So you have to have 50% marks to get into York University. Uh, how much do we have to spend for masters in computer science? So Deepak rightly mentioned, Soumya, that about it can vary between 20,000 to almost $35,000 a year. Uh, but normally, I think, if I'm not wrong, Deepak, every credit for master's should be about uh, a thousand odd uh, CAD. So which means you're going to be spending between 25 to 30 lakhs a year. Yes, Deepak? It can vary from school to school, Pranit, again. Very, very subjective. So yeah, uh, depends upon university you're going to. Like, you know, Lakehead University has their one-year MBA program. So my past job was with Lakehead University. So I know about their MBA program. Yeah, it used to cost at that point of time about 30,000. But I would suggest all the students to get the updated information from their website. Some universities have one year. Some universities have two-year programs. Uh, some un universities may ask you for GRE or a GMAT score for MBA program. And some universities also accept three years uh, bachelor's degree straight for their MBA program if you're coming from a NAC A grade uh, university with 60% or more, because that's that's equivalent to four years in Canada. So it all depends. You know, different universities have different requirements. But it, talking about the cost, it can vary from uh, between up $20,000, up about $20,000 a year. And it, the total cost of an MBA program can can be between thirty to forty thousand Canadian dollars, Absolutely. and that's the mid tier, like like you mentioned, Prani. Right, Deepak. Thank you so much. Uh, is one plus in UF free a better option? So, at the end of the day, your York University degree is going to be a lot more of affordable, almost half the price. That's one to begin with. Do I think as long as your employability is concerned? as long as your job opportunities are concerned, as long as the quality of education is concerned, it is unmatched with your cool university. I'd let Deepak throw more light on it, but, but uh, just, just, just for setting forth a context, Deepak, uh, the University of Fraser Valley in British Columbia also uh, runs a one plus three program in India, uh, you know, similar to what we done. Their first year fee is about six and a half lakhs. Then they have the second year fee about six and a half lakhs, and then the two years are on campus. Uh, we with us with York University, it's the same. So one plus three or two plus two. However, the actual first year cost is two and a half lakhs. Second is one and a half lakhs, and the third or fourth year that. So York, York will Deepak's University, York University actually gives a bursary of five thousand CAD every year. So instead of twenty thousand CAD, your actual fee per year is fifteen thousand CAD. Uh, with us, I'd let Deepak throw more light on the academic standpoint and the employability standpoint difference between UFV and York. Deepak, please. My suggestion is that, uh, you know, if there's a student who's studying at University of Fraser Valley, Chandigarh campus, if we're talking about, uh, you can transfer credits from there as well. And you can definitely contact the upgrad team who can help you through your application. So just in case, if we, if we have someone in our audience who've already started a program at University of Fraser Valley, Chandigarh, we have received a lot of students who have transferred credits in the past. You know, they decided not to go to UFE and they decided to come to Yorkville. So what I would suggest you do is you approach the upgrad team with your transcript syllabus and uh, they can have uh, you guys submit your application at Yorkville. We will look at how many subjects have you studied there. We will match the curriculum, what you have studied at UFE with what we teach in our program. If there's a 70% match and if you have C grade or above in those subjects, then chances are we will take off those subjects. So the duration of the program comes down, so will be the fee structure. And this is particularly for those students who have started for, at UFE. If you're a fresh grade 12 pass out student, then my suggestion would be that instead of going to UFE, my suggestion, if you're targeting your quill, then my suggestion would be that you start your program, Chandigarh University program online with UpGrad, because there it's a, it's a, pathway, clearly defined pathway program, where we're saying that your one year completed will give you all the credits for that, or two years uh, completed at uh, upgrade for Chandigarh University program, we're giving you the credits for that, complete credits, and we're completely waiving it off. 
with ufp chances are you might get the credit you might not get the credit it has it is dependent upon the how many subjects which are matching but here it's a clear cut articulation so if you've not started a program anywhere then start the program at upgrad and that is a better pathway to come to yorkville university so that option is there having said that uh, you know when uh, you're completing a program with upgrad let's assume that you're completing 50% like out of four years you're completing two years here uh, with upgrad chandigarh university program then you're liable to get a a bursary or a scholarship of about $5000 for the remaining of the rest of the two years right so our total bursary is $10000 which we offer to the students who start from scratch like complete their entire program at your course start to finish but if you're using upgrad pathway and if you're finishing two years here then your scholarship or the bursary is prorated depending upon how many credits have you completed here with upgrad and how many credits are remaining having said that bba is a 40 subject program you have to study 40 courses and every subject has three credits so you have to complete 120 credits right so your scholarship also gets prorated based on that i will quickly just to make sure that you have a better un understanding of this i'm sharing a slide on the fee structure so bachelor of business administration the total fee of the program after the $10000 scholarship is about $59750 first year fees that you have to pay is about $15000 right and assuming that you will finish the 50% two years here with the upgrad your fees will come down to half of what your you know doing of the total program which will be approximately about $30000 right i hope that on the fee based question i have i've already answered now the best part is my uh you know my experience is in most cases you know the students usually the parents support them with their first year fees which will be $15000 in your case and $10000 which is a gic so about $25000 your parents will probably give you when you're traveling to canada because that fee needs to be paid up front my experience is when you work part time or full time during your break chances are by the time you enter into the second year you would have recovered all your fees for the second year also because with those jobs you can save all the money your first year fees is already paid by your parents and by the time you have entered your second year chances are you would have recovered that fees by working part time or full time during your breaks right so i think that makes makes the degree program very very affordable this articulation agreement is like again i would say a blessing in disguise for all our indian students Absolutely, and that helps you to achieve your dream to make your career or settlement in Canada much more easier. Yeah, I think, and we've tried to make it more affordable than a private university in India. Deepak rightly mentioned at the beginning that for a three-year work visa, you need a minimum of two years of education on campus. And while the Indian market, as we understand, is more of a master's-intensive market because they want academic readiness. for their kids first or you guys want it for yourselves first to fend for yourself i think that's one or two years of liberty that your cool university gives you in india to prepare yourself to start on campus but don't waste so much cost and don't waste so much of time 5 6 years to just get somewhere in a good job as long as you have a bachelor's degree you are good to go you are good to get jobs and so you spend two years here or one year here three years on campus you get a degree you get good employment if you start with diploma right after 12 deepak mentioned that at the, at the end of the day there's going to be a ceiling you know a roof a cap to your growth in terms of your career ultimately you can't do masters you still have to do the bachelor's again to actually get there which means another four years of study to actually get into any master's degree so diploma some menial mundane jobs bachelor's and then again masters after which you get managerial roles which a bachelor's degree with your cool university can easily get you in the same budget so to 20 so if you're looking at indian universities like op jindal i am i can guarantee that they're going to be costing you more than 25 lakhs for four years more than 25 lakhs i think their every year their fee is about six and a half to eight and a half lakhs and plus hostel so we're making that very affordable and i think one of the points that deepak mentioned i don't want to reiterate it that 
as long as it's a degree, as long as you've studied those 40 subjects, you hold the status of a bachelor degree holder in Canada. I don't think there's much difference, very marginal difference of what employability opportunities come to you. And Deepak also mentioned the other affiliations that you get with Canadian government associations with supply chain, accountancy, so on and so forth. That puts you in a better position to network, puts you in a better position to access opportunities. I think that's where you get every benefit and you don't have to make such a long schematic plan that bachelors and then I will go for masters and then, then I'll go do a diploma. Plus, Deepak mentioned you need two years for three-year work visa. Most PG diplomas are sometimes for a year, especially in law. So which means you do two diplomas back to back to get there. And you was wasting about five years in India doing a BA with law or BCom with law. And then another two years, seven years after you trying to find the same life, which you can easily get after two years of your quality. Another thing which I'd want people to talk about is you can actually finish a four year bachelor degree in two and a half years with your quality. Uh, We'd, we'd want to know more about it, Deepak. Sure, Praneet. So, see, one of the biggest advantage with Yorkville University is that we have ruling intake. What that means is we have a term or an intake starting every three months. We have four terms in a year. We have January, April, July, and October. So currently, we're accepting application for April intake and July intake. And we have four terms in a year. Our BBA is a 10-term program. And we're assuming that the student would take at least four subjects every term. So 40 subjects, they can finish it off in 10 terms, right? Now, what we're assuming, another thing we're assuming is that the student will uh, study for all the four terms in the first years, which is Jan, April, July, and October. Second year, again, they study all the four terms, which makes it eight terms. Third year, first two terms, eight plus two, 10, and they finish it off in 2.5 years, which is without any break. Now, a lot of students would feel that this could be stressful, you know, and you know how can I finish my program without any breaks? So let me tell you again at Yorkville University, we have this flexibility where you can choose your classes or the subjects as per your convenience. What that means is if you have to complete certain hours of study in a week, let's assume you have to complete 14 or 16 hours of study. So you know you have a choice whether you want to come for four, come, come to the campus for four days or five days or six days spend a couple of hours every single day, like two, three hours or four hours every single day to finish that hours, achieve that hours of study. Or, you know, we have given you the flexibility that if you want to come to the campus for two days or three days and spend full two days or three days on the campus and finish that entire weeks of education. What that means is that leaves you with four or five days where you can pursue your passion, hobby, or if you want to maximize your off-campus work opportunities. That means you can choose to come to the campus for two to three days in a week, and you're absolutely free for remaining four or five days to pursue anything you want to. Having said that, again, it is not a compulsion. If there's a student who wants to slow down, wants to take a break, they can also finish it off in three years with the break. Or if they want to further slow down, they also have a flexibility to complete it in complete four years. It is completely up to the student how they pick up their courses. They have to do at least three courses every term. And uh, in my experience, again, uh, the student wants to finish the program as soon as possible so that you know they can apply for their postgraduate work permit and they can start off with their PR formalities. So that is the edge advantage that we give to the student that they can still finish their four-year equivalent degree in 2.5 years. Absolutely. So, so what we're saying is one year in India, another it's instead of the full three years, you can actually cover that up in about two years. So in three years, you actually get your bachelor's degree done. If you fast track uh, the amount of credits you can pursue every semester, uh, which Deepa rightly mentioned. Also, although it's a little technically uh, difficult to understand about how these things work, but what we're trying to ideally tell you is you can save up on a lot of time with your full university don't have to spend complete four years to earn your bachelor's degree. As long as you fulfill the requisite credits, 120, you're through. Uh, and of course, you have to fulfill the common norm that minimum and maximum credits doable in, uh, in the ac academic semester of six months. Uh, the, Deepak, the next question for you is, I'm currently in plus two, I have to give my exams in the month of March, April, what can I do now? So Agrini, 
uh, here's what you have to do. You have to write to me on praneet.singh at upgrad.com. And just, just send me your 10th transcript uh, and your predictive scores of grade 12th or your first semester board result. I will get that vetted through Deepak as long as, long as you're convinced of a 50% mark uh, grade or a score in your grade 12th, you're free to enroll into York University's July batch with us, doable with us. You just have to send me your mark sheets. Uh, Deepak, the next question is, before we jump to the next question, Praneet, on that note, I just wanted to play a quick video, a one minute video. Please. And that says why you're full university. Sure. So, Please. Yeah. Just let me know if you're getting the sound or not, you know? Yes. Just give me a quick second. The sound is not audible. No. No, let okay. me see if I can give you the permission. Well, actually, I think you what you have to do is where 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 it, where it says Sing additional commitments in a supportive. Now you can get the sound. Flexible. You can get the sound now, right? Yes. Well, rigorous and career-focused degrees are designed to equip students and empower graduates to become global leaders in emerging industries. Programs are designed to be accessible with the flexibility to earn a degree while balancing additional commitments in a supportive, collaborative and interactive learning community. With campuses in Toronto and Vancouver, two of Canada's most vibrant multicultural cities with renowned quality of life, making new friends, exploring new communities and cultures, and balancing your studies with fun activities in and outside the city is a part of the student life experience. Offering accelerated degrees, Yorkville programs are flexible and accessible, allowing students to transfer various academic credits to elective courses and finish in as few as 2.5 years. This degree's program includes Bachelor's of Business Administration, Bachelor's of Interior Design, and Bachelor's of Creative Art. Students who continuously study full-time on campus for the majority of their courses may be eligible for post-graduation work permit. Scholarships starting at $10,000 for all students, small class sizes, and a supportive faculty that creates a space for students to feel supported and find belonging. Come find your place at York University. One more. My name is Amit Sharma. I am from India. One more. I'm Sorry, one more video will play before we we go forward. This is my favorite video. I can't leave this session without playing this video. Sure. I'm from Ahmedabad, India. So I found that York University helps us complete our four-year bachelor's in two to two point five years. I mean, imagine I would get my chance to like you know explore the world and start my own business in the early age of my life when I was submitting my application. There's so many doubts, like will I look foolish? Will my professor judge me if I ask any questions? Will my friends and everyone laugh at me? Still, I believed in myself and I submitted my application. It was a few days and I was like, did I get in? No, yes, no, any response, nothing. And after a few days, a letter came and I just give it to my mom. And my, my mom was like, it is for you. It is for Krupali Patel. It's for you. You got it in. You're gonna leave your dream. When I came in 2016 in Toronto, I remember my experience first time traveling, and I was like, I was so confused where I have to go. And I just asked someone that, you know, where can I go? And he was like, okay, go this and go there. So, like, people over here are always there to help. The Canadian transportation system, TTC, and everything is so best. Even if you're staying far away and you want to come downtown, there are subways and trains and everything to help, and especially buses. Like, their frequency is good. So, like, all you need is like your pass, and then you can go wherever you want to travel, right? There's no like restriction that you only need car to travel. The current inspired me to achieve my dreams. I wanted to make my parents proud, and they are proud. Thanks, Deepak. I'm sure these videos are going to be super helpful. Uh, I think to jump to a couple of more questions. Uh, so we've got it's a good game development colleges, I think. So th this does not fall under the purview of the. No, I can I can talk about game development also. Uh, 
so york hill university also has a sister called toronto film school and uh, toronto film school is number one film school across canada the best part is that we have a partnership with this toronto international film festival which is third biggest across the world and we've also been ranked amongst the top 50 undergraduate schools for gaming program so let me quickly share one of the brochures here if you give me a second uh just give me a quick second so we have six diploma programs here at uh, toronto film school one of our biggest programs is uh, film production program and then we have video game design and animation video game design and development we have graphic design and then we have acting for film television theater and writing for film and television so these are the six diploma programs that we have at uh, toronto film school we also have a pathway program so if someone completes a game design program at uh, toronto film school what they can do is then they can come to yorkville university for a bca program bachelor of creative arts it's a like a combination of two programs you finish toronto film school program and you finish uh, bachelor of creative arts at yorkville university so one and a half years at toronto film school and another two years at yorkville university you get a diploma of toronto film school a degree of yorkville university and a post graduate work permit for up to 3 years we are also giving a scholarship of 29 up to 29500 dollars which means that you're completing both the credentials within 3 years 3 and a half years at a cost of a bba program only i mean the total cost of the program would only be about 57 to 65000 dollars again which is very very affordable i can tell you game design industry is a couple of billion dollars industry across uh, canada and it's growing like anything one of the biggest employers for our game design is ubisoft which is based based out of montreal quebec and a lot of our graduates have been hired by ubisoft after finishing these programs so i think these are two good options uh, that you can look at uh, at toronto film school plus yorkwell when you apply for these programs you get a combined offer letter of both toronto film school as well as yorkwell university and you also get your scholarship and again you can approach up grad to start your application for these programs thanks deepak we have a couple of questions on costs of mba again so i told you mba is going to be between 20 to 20, 25 lakhs where, whereas a normal mba degree would go beyond 30 lakhs we're trying to reduce the cost by about 7 to 8 lakhs for you uh the minimum eligibility for your kul university bachelor program is 50% and uh, the minimum eligibility for mba is going to be 50% in your bachelors and the fee structure is one year in india is going to be about 2.5 lakhs in the second year in canada is going to be about 20 lakhs so all in all it's going to be about 22 and a half lakhs 20 lakhs in canada for 15 months uh for the first year it's going to be 2 and a half lakhs you're going to be in vancouver there's a university partner is there university can the west uh with deepak you do a bba with your kul university uh, in energy management accounting supply chain management and project management if you're coming from a science background or you ideally are coming from a business background but want to move into the it industry i think project management is the best uh, pick for you it uh, allows you a best you know uh, you know the best of both the worlds so you can be employed at a business company or an it company either way uh, i i want to study a broad minimum cost ug degree or diploma yes science so 25 deg- uh, lakhs is what it's going to cost you and if you want to do a diploma i think about 13 to 14 lakhs for 2 years but then uh it's very s- relative to what your case is like what your background is like when did you graduate well i think on that note i'll also ask deepak that how many gap years are actually acceptable in canada deepak so see pranit again it depends from school to school some schools have uh, a limitation on gap But good part is that yorkville again we are very very flexible so we don't have any criteria on gap and we have seen successes with visa also so for example you know we had a student from gujarat who was 33 years of age they had done 10 plus 3 years of civil engineering and then they applied for bba project management and they got the visa having said that it was an exception and you can generalize so usually we have seen if we were to look at the stats 
anybody who's less than 25 years of age and if they're applying for an undergraduate program, then it's a healthy application. For masters, usually it is less than 35 years of age. So chances of visas are higher. So, you know, that way you can calculate your gap accordingly. But again, like I said, it can vary from school to school. Right, Deepak, absolutely understood. What more questions do we have? Well, I think, again, I, <laughs> we have so many MBA prospects here. So uh, the MBA in India is going to be for 11 months, but you don't need a work, work experience. You can easily transition from a three-year degree. Uh, there are going to be 15 months in Canada. You get a 15 months work visa. If you do another six months of education there and pay about three and a half to four lakhs, you get a proper three-year work visa, right? So everything is dependent on your aspirations and budget. But I think the biggest benefit of studying with upgrad with deep with with bachelor's, you know, uh, for, for a bachelor's degree with York Will or for a master's degree with UCW is that these universities become a lot more accessible. You can easily enter not having to give your GMAT, not having to give your SATs, not having to do your IELTS in the beginning. You have so much of flexibility to enter these universities. And so a three-year visa is not difficult. You just have to fulfill extra six months of study, which you easily can. It's not going to be much of a cost you anyway, but you can finally do an MBA without a work experience. I think we'll ask Deepak about salary. So Deepak, just give us a contrast between employability, starting salaries after BBA and starting salary after MBA in your experience, Deepak. Again, uh, Praneet, uh, it can vary from city to city, depending upon from where you have studied. I think I can more talk about from the BBA standpoint of view, which is about 40 to $50,000. I think even MBA can probably, you know, start somewhere from 40 to 50. I know the students would be curious, would be like, you know, I've done my MBA, why am I starting with the minimum average salary? So usually, you know, it also depends upon what kind of work experience um, that you bring in on the table. If you have a prior work experience uh, in Canada, then chances are you might get a higher salary. It also depends upon what kind of specializations you have done because MBA also comes with different kind of specialization and BBA also comes with. So it, but on an average, the salaries range between 40 to 50,000. That's the average minimum pay package. Thanks, Deepak. I think that was a wonderful space, Deepak. I'd like to thank you for being so helpful uh, to us. I think you have cleared out most of the doubts. This last question we have, Deepak, is PGDM versus MBA. Uh, so Deepak actually mentioned this. He mentioned the basic difference between a diploma and a degree and the number of points you get based on your qualification. Employability, 100%. He's mentioned that you have, of course, a greater starting salary after you do an MBA. I think I'd let people add to it that uh, if he had to choose between a PGDM versus an MBA. So his past experience with Canadian universities, you know, I'm sure he's equipped to answer this. I'm sorry, Praneet, can you repeat that one? Yeah, so there's a learner who wanted to understand the difference between PGDM versus MBA, a PG diploma in management versus MBA, uh, and what might be some of the salient salary or employability differences in the two. Again, uh, see Praneet, in my experience, the postgraduate diplomas could be more specific. So for example, you know, if the student has already done an MBA program here in India and they're looking for another program in Canada. So, you know, with postgraduate diplomas, again, you can get some specialization. You know, a lot of people go for human resource management, project management, supply chain management. In fact, in MBA also. So, but you know, in MBA, it could be more, uh, there could be research work involved in MBA thesis and plus a practical, but this is the postgraduate diplomas are more hands-on learning. So that's a major difference. And then the other difference could be, you know, uh, again, with the employability uh, that uh, with the MBA program, chances are you might get a better job with a higher salary uh, because it involves research work and other stuff. And then it also, there's a difference in the cost also. Uh, diplomas could be cheaper than the degree programs. So these are the major, major differences is what I would say. 
Right, Deepak. I think this was an excellent space. I think we'd have to cut off here. Uh, we've exceeded time and I don't want to keep you waiting. Uh, well, I think I, I'm very grateful to you of, you know, for, for having been here with us. I think you have definitely been a great help, Deepak. And we wish good luck to all learners. Plus, as an additional advice, if you've got any questions unanswered, please write to me on praneet.singh at upgrad.com. I will put my email address down below and I will put those questions forward to Deepak. Uh, would, would you have any parting words, Deepak? Uh, as always, Praneet, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate and enjoy uh, always talking to your audience. You, you guys have a great uh, student base and you know they always come up with some amazing question and it's always a pleasure to answer those. And I wish all the students a very good luck in choosing their college, university, and uh, you know, I wish for the best uh, for them. So that that's pretty much it at my end. If you have more questions, please reach out to Praneet. You have his email ID, and I'll be more than happy to connect as always and answer any questions that I can. Absolutely. So Agrini, BBA in HR. We don't have a specialization in HR. However, HR as a general subject is always covered in BBA. The first year, second year, we always have a subject, right? So wishing all of you good luck. Uh, I have mostly reiterated everything. I We assist you in every university. Please write to us on an email. And we should, I'm sorry, we're working from home, so. <laughs> Can I imagine someone's on your door, impatient, go, go for it, Pranit. I think we're anyways wrapping up our session. Wishing all, all of you super good luck.